Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be an in-depth guide for my lockdown tournament build for success in the arena and Doom Tower and content in general. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, we will do a quick refresher course on Tournament's kit. I will give you his multipliers on his skills and kind of the general concept of him as a champion. Then we will go over the build and show you exactly how and where it will shine in the game. So first of all, the A1 is an AOE. Now this brings a lot of utility. If you bring him in something like a stun set, you're constantly popping off those AOEs and proccing those stun effects. Has a 15% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn, but the books can be super impactful and get that up to 25% instantly activates the skill whenever an enemy under both freeze and hp burn debuff takes damage from the hp burn and then he scales with defense as his main stat for dealing damage now this means he's obviously going to pair well with hp champions and start getting some bonus value out of this aoe slapping the enemies every time the hp burn procs as long as he's also got them under a freeze and then for the multiplier of the skill, it is 2.0 times defense. So it's very bad. It's uh, The A1 is not there to do damage, but that is totally fine because it brings a lot of utility. It's not about dealing damage with this A1. Then for the A2, we've got remove all buffs from the target enemy, then attack the target two times. Steal all buffs instead if the target is already under a freeze. We'll ignore defense if the target is under both freeze and HP burn. Obviously more synergy with the HP burn mechanic. And the multiplier of this is 3.0 times defense, which seems low for something that only attacks one enemy. But remember, it hits twice. So it's essentially a 6.0 multiplier, which is not bad. And it's definitely his hardest hitting ability. And then for the A3, we've got another AOE, so obviously more value with that stun set. Places a block buffs debuff and a 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns on enemies that are already under a freeze. But if they are not under a freeze, then he's got a 60% chance that can be booked up to 80 of placing a provoke instead if they were not under that freeze. And that's gonna be for one turn. We can decrease the cooldown of one random skill of each ally by one turn for every enemy attacked both under a freeze and an HP burn. So if you do have him in a team where there's freeze and HP burn already online, he can actually reduce the cooldown of one random skill of each of your allies. So that can also be very impactful. Now it is a four turn cooldown. We can't book this to a three turn, but it does bring a lot of value and it's very impactful in different situations. And then the multiplier for this skill is going to be 3.8 times defense on an AoE. So uh, it's not going to be a big damage dealer. Uh, his, his hardest hitting ability, like I said, is definitely the A2. And then uh, other than that, he's not really going to be doing a ton of damage. He is more about a utility CC champion in terms of bringing value to the team. And then for the passive, I know there's a lot going on, but it doesn't hurt to have a good refresher course on this. 20% chance that you can book up to 30 of placing a freeze debuff on the enemy each time they receive a buff or have their terminator filled. The 20% chance applies up to twice per enemy, once for buffs and once for terminator fills. So if somebody gets three buffs placed on them, it's not gonna have a chance to proc the three times in that turn. It's only gonna be the once. And Torment has been reworked a bunch of times. So if you got a little bit confused, don't feel bad. A lot of us did. Uh, then in cases where an enemy receives multiple of these effects at the same time, it's saying that uh, again, uh, that, that that's kind of finishing the point of it only happening once per effect. Does not work with the effects from artifact sets Terminator filling, effects from masteries, healing, or those buffs or effects that take place at the start of a round. So that's basically saying, like, uh, if you're wearing a shield set, the shield set places a uh, shield on, on the whole team or whatever, uh, that's not going to proc this freeze effect from the shield set activating at the start of the fight. Then his active effect on this passive is going to be revive himself with full HP when he's killed and place a freeze debuff on himself. So as long as he's able to kind of sustain that one turn when he's under the freeze, now he's back and rolling again. But even fully booked, this is a six turn cooldown. Then for the passive, we've got a great one. It's all battles and it's 33% defense. So very generally useful and you can really take it anywhere and at least get some value out of it. So I really like his aura. And then for base stats, uh, they're pretty solid. 20,000 HP for a defense champion is fine. 1421 is a pretty solid base defense. The 94 speed is a bit slow, but remember he can kind of be designed to go at the back end of your rotation. He can get a lot of value in teams where you go second. So the base speed of 94 being a little bit slow doesn't hurt as much as you would think it would. Crit rate, crit damage are normal. The resist of 70 is super sturdy. So I love that. The dwarves in general 
seem to have pretty high resistance. So I like the theme of the faction there being really sturdy. It, it definitely matches dwarves. And then the 20 base accuracy is nice because he is a champion that needs accuracy to get value out of a lot of the stuff in his kit. So the base accuracy of 20 definitely helps him hit some of those thresholds. But now that we had a quick refresher course on some of the effects here in Tournament's kit and his stats, let's dive on into the tournament that I've got built and talk about this lockdown build that I use my tournament in. Alrighty, so here is my tournament I've got built on my main account. You can see here the artifact sets are speed and stun. I love this build with him in the stun because he just does so much CC with the freezes and the stuns and the heal reduction and then removing buffs. He just brings so much CC and utility to the team that him being in a stun set with the masteries that we've got on him, it, it, it's just an insane amount of control for your team. But uh, anyway, the, the total stats, in case you want to see or compare to a tournament you're building, the 52k uh, HP, the attack completely irrelevant. You don't have to pay attention to that. You don't want any attack on him. 4794 defense, 221 speed, and then the crit rate and the crit damage. Remember, his multipliers are not great. He's not some insane damage dealer. Uh, I've seen some damage tournaments. I'm not saying that it's stupid to do that or anything, but uh, in this build, I'm really using him as a lockdown cc -er utility champion. I'm not going to be building him for due damage. Uh, resistance of 236 is pretty solid for somebody that you're building to have accuracy. We'll take it because his base resistance is 70, which is really good. And if you're curious, I do have the accuracy chart right here, but uh, just take note that PvP is just an estimate. Like it says there, gold 4, 400 plus, platinum 600 plus. There's some teams you're going to need more than that. Uh, there's some teams you're going to need less than that. PvP is an estimate. You cannot take that to the bank. The clan boss and the dungeons are a little bit more concrete, and I should add a section here for Doom Tower. I will work on that. But basically, in the Doom Tower, 350 accuracy. I can put that away here so you can see the stats. But I built in for 350 accuracy. That's viable for like 98% of Doom Tower content. Now, at the very end of hard, when you get to like stage 111 to stage 120, you will, you will run into like some Mountain Kings and stuff that have resistance of like 365 or something. But it's very rare that 350 is not enough to uh, get you full potential in the Doom Tower. But if you want to be perfectly safe, you're probably going to want to get up closer to around 400 accuracy and so, you, so that you never have to worry about it in the Doom Tower. But 350 should be totally viable for most teams in Gold 4 and almost all of the Doom Tower. So for the gearing process, I will show you what I am wearing quickly and explain the choices. You're going to want an accuracy banner with your best blend of speed and toughness. The amulet, uh, remember, we're probably going to want to go defense on him. But the most important thing is probably getting lots of accuracy on the uh, on the sub stat there. So if you've got a really good HP amulet and you get a couple rolls of accuracy and that's the best you can do, don't feel bad about using that. On the ring, we're just looking for as much HP and defense as we can get. The boots, now um, you can try some uh, some slow torment builds with defense percent boots as long as you're getting a bunch of accuracy from them or something or, or they're super sturdy. So uh, more viable than normal to not go with speed boots, but I'm trying to make a build that is viable going all through Doom Tower, which I will explain in a little bit, and I do want high speeds for that, but I can understand the argument for going defense boots on Torment here. Uh, for the chest, you're going to want to go defense with speed and accuracy and sustain. Gloves are probably going to want defense with your best blend of speed, HP, and accuracy. The top ones, same thing. You're looking for your best blend of speed, accuracy, and toughness, but there is my pieces in case you were curious. For the booking process, uh, the books are impactful on Torment. You're going to want to spend them. It kind of is what it is. Uh, it takes two, plus three is five, plus two is seven, plus four is 11. Uh, he's worth the 11 books. So uh, you're, you're definitely going to use Tormund uh, pretty consistently in at least Tag Team Arena and in a lot of the Doom Tower and in Faction Wars. So yeah, he, uh, the bottom line is the books are pretty impactful and do not feel bad about spending the 11 books on booking up Tormund. But... The key to this build is making sure we get the masteries right and we take this fearsome presence mastery because we're going to be pairing that with the stun set. Remember, I've got the stun set as the artifacts here. We've got stun plus speed. So we're going to want to be pairing that with fearsome presence so that we can take the 18% of the stun and turn that into a 23% chance. That 5% is super impactful when we go from 18 to 23 and then the rest, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. But if you want to be able to pull up these masteries and copy them, if maybe if you're doing this build, uh, you're, you're doing a stun set tournament or something, I will screenshot this and link it down in a pinned comment so that you can pull it up and take a look if you wish. 
But now let me go ahead and show you uh, this tournament build in action. It's a it, it's a fun build and uh, and something that I use a lot in, in the game. So I'll, first I'll show you in the arena kind of how it goes. Uh, now it's good for farming gold for lazy. Obviously, it's most optimal to build like a super speed team and just nuke everything down quickly. But then if you lose a speed battle or something and all of a sudden now you, you, you lost a fight, you weren't efficient with your arena tokens. With this tournament build, I can build a team that goes second and 99% of the time, uh, I'll end up getting them locked down and and I'll be able to win the fight just on full auto and, and kind of lazily farm the arena without having to worry about building or uh, le like fighting the, the speed meta or whatever in gold four. So I'll try to show you some tougher fights. Uh, I'll try to go up against some decent teams here in gold four so you can see the, uh, the lockdown tournament in action here. There we go. You see the provoke on the Krisk there. That was because, uh, remember, it wasn't under the, the debuffs required to... Uh, oh, and there you see the uh, the 22k on Chris. That was a decent hit there uh, from the tournament. Remember, that ability is his hardest hitting ability for sure. And there's the freeze from the tournament A1 on the AoE. All right. And now we'll do a refresh, and I'll, I'll try to go up against some tough teams here in gold four, whatever I can find in terms of, uh, we'll see if we can find like a 200 K or something. Um, uh, do, 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 140. Oh, here's another torment team. 160, a torment, uh, Molly with a reviver. This will be a tough one. Let's go ahead and run this battle of the torments. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll break with the Saris and we'll start letting it roll. We do want to, uh, definitely, they're rolling with the Molly here. We'll take down the Reviver if we can. You can see there lots of CC. And there we go. We got a hard enough hit there from the Torment to go ahead and take down the Revive. Now we'll be fine. Uh, a team like this is more designed to just be a slow squeeze, lazy farming metals. And, and it'll be a great team for uh, for 3v3 Arena. But it's really good to build at least one kind of go second defensive style team. And, and this Torment build is going to slot perfectly into that role. So here we've got almost a 200k uh, Hegemon team, and I'll show you kind of how that goes. So uh, the, the way that this specific team is kind of built around this Tormund is I've got the Lydia here helping the resistance with a high resistance battle, and then he goes first, cleanses everything, and then that, that lets me get the ball rolling, even if they've got something like a Hegemon. It's kind of my most general utility defense team to kind of cover all those different bases and go in a specific rotation but we'll see exactly how it goes here versus the tournament he's going to go ahead and block you can see my bad l resisted everything and then whoever got their cooldowns locked you can see the saris on the right my bad l is going to go ahead and cleanse that and then my saris is free to break the defense and we are off and rolling we will click on the reviver because we obviously want to prioritize locking those cooldown skills and targeting that down and then we are off and running with the uh, the slow squeeze of all of the debuffs and CC. And boom, there is the Iceberg Crush, and we take it down. And then to show you uh, how I use him in the Doom Tower, we've had one reset just a couple days ago. So I'm only on floor 31 as of right now. But this is my general progression team in the Doom Tower uh, with, with Lysandra and then Ignatius pairing with the Tormund that I'm talking about in this video. Syl is there for the heals, sustain, revive, and general utility that she brings. And then Lydia is obviously amazing in the Doom Tower. So this team right here will work like in 100 plus floors. I just put it on full auto. It's my lazy uh, Doom Tower progression team. And like I said with the Tormund, the, uh, the 350 accuracy is totally viable for 99% of the champions in the Doom Tower, even on the hard section. And then as I'm progressing in the Doom Tower, once I get up in the higher stages, once things are low like this, I'll, I'll, I'll take it off auto and I'll start spamming A1s. Or if I get in a, in a stage that maybe counters my team, I'll have to make a swap or I'll have to run through and play on manual or I'll uh, you know make, make some changes. But for like 100 of the floors, this is what I use. And it really centers around getting a lot of value out of that Tormund there. He just does so much, when he's, especially when he's paired with the Ignatius. You can even do that in the arena as well. Have a team built around uh, Tormund and, Ign and Ignatius. They really pair super well and can get a lot of work done together. There we go. Yeah, see, so that's bad. Like, I, like, I, like I should have taken it off auto and been spamming a ones there to uh, to get things off of a cooldown. But but here on floor 31, it won't be a problem. Once I get up to like floors 80, 90, 100, I need to start kind of uh, paying attention and making sure I'm spamming a ones instead of just letting it go on auto when they've got uh, champions with slivers of health left.
And that is how I get some value out of the Lockdown Tournament build and how it performs in the defensive arena teams and my general progression Doom Tower team. So that is going to do it for this build video on the Lockdown Tournament that I use on my account. I've been experimenting with doing more specific build type videos. Uh, so if you have any input on what you like or what you don't like, I would really enjoy if you would let me know down in the comments anything I can do to be better at making content for you guys. I would really appreciate to, uh, to know that. So that's going to do it for this one. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.